Hey YouTube, Joyboy here, so today I want to talk about the Straw Hat Crew and specifically the mysterious origins of many of the Straw Hat Crew members. And so guys, I've heard this being discussed before, but I don't think the idea is popular enough yet for how popular I really think it should be. And the idea is relatively straightforward, but um, that we might be getting a pattern in One Piece. We might be starting a pattern. A lot of people have theorized elements of this and sort of have put the dots together. So what exactly am I talking about? Well, uh, we'll start off with Luffy. There have been several backstories concerning Luffy. Luffy, Luffy obviously being the main character. When he was first introduced, we learned about his relationship with Shanks. Later on, we learned more of his relationship with Ace and Dadan and everyone else. Uh, and then obviously with Garp as well. And then Saba was introduced later in the story. So there's been elements and layers added onto Luffy's backstory as the story has progressed. But I don't think any of the other Straw Hats are going to have quite uh, the, the full backstory that Luffy will have. But for it's really interesting to note that many of them have elements of their past that as of now are really inexplicable and we have enough to suggest that it might be answered in the future. And this is when Oda drops on us the Whole Cake Island arc. The Whole Cake Island arc in which we get introduced to one of the characters many people weren't sure needed any more of a fleshed out backstory in Sanji actually getting a more fleshed out backstory. When we were first introduced to Sanji, the real question that we had is he was on a ship that got attacked and basically Zeph saved him and they starved in an island. But what exactly, where was Sanji before then? Who was his actual family? And so many people weren't sure if that was going to be addressed, but it has been addressed with the reveal of the Vin Smoke. But that's cool and all, right? Okay, Sanji got a more fleshed out backstory, but perhaps Oda is just fleshing out Sanji's backstory and he will not do it for the rest of this Dry Hat crew. It's definitely a possibility, but I believe many of us will disagree with that thought because there's a very popular theory out there that Zoro's origins and Zoro's family will also be incredibly interesting and perhaps touched upon in the next arc, the Wano arc. It's actually remarkable how similar uh, so sort of what's left to be revealed about Zoro's backstory and what was left to be revealed about Sanji's backstory. With Zoro, we have the reveal that he was sort of traveling, looking, taking on dojos, etc., beating them because he was just a boss. And then he ran across a dojo with an opponent that he could not beat, and this set his ties between uh, b basically uh, the dojo master, I forgot what his name is, and Kuena, and that was all of Zoro's backstory that we have. Zoro's backstory is so small and insignificant compared to many of the other Straw Hats, it's actually mind-boggling. But just like Sanji, how did Zoro get in that position to meet Kuena? Who is his actual family? What happened to him? Uh, to make him go around challenging dojos in the first place. How can we explain this? And while it's incredibly difficult to explain every facet of this, the very popular idea is that Zoro is distantly related to the people of Wano. He's, in fact, the descendant of Ryuma, the zombie who carried the legendary sword which he defeated in Thriller Bark. And so guys, I absolutely love this theory. It's one of my absolute favorite. Uh, throughout the Thriller Bark arc, we got parallels between Ryuma and Zura, how similar they were in fighting style and body type. Um, also, uh, it seems as though Ryuma's sword, his legendary sword, chose Zoro as his owner, almost as though the sword was passing to its rightful owner. And then it's also worth noting that um, uh, the short story that Oda wrote before One Piece was called Monsters, and the main hero of that story was actually Ryuma, and Oda has addressed this in an SBS saying that the Ryuma we see in One Piece and the Ryuma from his short story Monsters is the same person, and if you actually look at Ryuma before he died and became a zombie, he looks oh so similar to Zoro. So you could speculate something like this, keeping in mind that the Inherited Will is a strong, uh, sort of force in One Piece. Um, it could be s as simple as why is Zoro challenging dojos when he's a kid? Is he's just um, compelled by his inner desire to to wield a sword and, and beat opponents, similar to Ryuma, his ancient ancestor. Now I know that explanation is half-assed, but it could be something of that nature. It seems like uh, it definitely something that could happen in the story. And so we have Sanji and Zoro with potentially uh, uh, backstories that will be further 
explored. But there's another character as well that seems incredibly likely to have his backstory explained and that person is Brooke and his backstory could be explained as quickly as later in the Whole Cake Island arc. And so of course every One Piece fan knows Brooke's backstory involving Yorkie and Laboon. But one thing that is incredibly interesting about Brooke's backstory is he didn't actually join Yorkie's crew until the ripe old age of 39. So the backstory quote unquote that we see of Brooke is when he is already an old ass man. And just like the previous examples of Sanji and Zoro, we're left with the question of how exactly what events led up to Brook joining Yoki's crew. What did he do from the ages of, you know, 1 to 38? And we actually have a clue, and this is why I'm absolutely certain at some point in time Oda will address Brook's backstory further, as he mentions at the end of the Thriller Bark arc that before his time on Yoki's crew, he was a member of a convoy. The exact quote is long ago, I was the convoy leader of a battle fleet for a kingdom. And that's it, that's all Oda decided to mention and for sure he will explain this further so that we understand what the hell that actually means. And so why I speculate that this could be potentially addressed in the whole Cake Island arc, and to quote King of Lightning, Brook knows some shit. He knows some shit about the Vinsmoke. Um, and so given what he seems to know about the Vinsmoke, it makes me wonder if the convoy, being a convoy leader of a group of, of like a battle fleet for a kingdom has something to do with basically the demise of the Vinsmoke in the past. But as always, this doesn't have to be the case. I just feel like it's our best guess at the moment. So now we have Brook, Sanji, and Zoro. The trend is forming. Now let's talk about Frankie. And so Frankie's backstory, again, is something everyone knows. Frankie uh, basically was adopted by Tom uh, and trained to be a shipwright and all the drama involving him, etc. It was a really good backstory. But just like all the other previous examples, we're left with the question of how exactly did Frankie end up getting adopted by Tom? Where was he and who is he related to? All of these same questions. And similar to Brooke, we have something that resembles a clue. It's revealed that Frankie's parents were in fact pirates and they essentially abandoned him. And so guys, there's really not a lot to go on here. And so from this, it could be possible that this backstory, whatever it may be, even if it gets fleshed out, we really don't have a good idea of what it could end up being. However, I found this one detail to be incredibly interesting. This is a theory that actually doesn't seem to be overly popular. It was actually kind of hard to track down the theory again after the fact. But Frankie's parents might in fact have a connection to the Revolutionary Army because there is a person that we see in the Revolutionary Army, which I'm picturing right here, who straight up looks like Frankie. That is the Frankie face. Like, t you take Frankie's face and paste it on this guy's face, it's the same face. Um, this could very well be Frankie's father, in my opinion. And so this could potentially mean that when, by the time that the Straw Hats actually meet the revolutionaries in the story, we might actually get to learn more about Frankie's past. And so we have Zoro, Sanji, Brooke, and Frankie. Now let's move on to Nico Robin. Nico Robin's backstory was one of the absolute best in the story in my opinion. I really recommend you go back and read the O'Hara story. It's only like five pages. And every time I read it, man, it gives me the feels. But there's one interesting facet of Robin's backstory that could be potentially really interesting, which is who exactly is Robin's father? This is actually similar to another question people ask, which is who exactly is uh, Luffy's mother? But the difference between the two situations is that uh, Luffy's mother has not been mentioned in the story at all, not in the slightest, and you could potentially interpret that to mean that it doesn't matter who Luffy's mother really is, it's possible that Dadan is always meant to be Luffy's mother, and there will never be a character introduced or revealed to be Luffy's actual mother. But in the case of Robin, this does not hold true because Oda took the time to mention that, that Robin does in fact have a father, and that her father is going to be interesting. In Nico Olivia's backstory, essentially when she abandoned Robin to go on her six year trip to find the Poneglyphs, she reveals uh, or basically in a conversation it's revealed that her going on a trip for the Poneglyphs was her husband's unfulfilled wish. Guys, I absolutely think Nico Robin's father 
is an extremely important person, or was an extremely important person, before apparently he died. Or if he didn't die, perhaps he just left uh, Olvia and Nico Robin to go on a search for the Poneglyphs by himself. I know I've been saying Nico Olivia, or I said Nico Olivia, it's Olvia. I always get that confused when I read that. I always skip over the vowel there. But anyway, um, so I really think that this could be important. And so some of the ideas are maybe Dragon is actually Robin's father. I'm not really a fan of this idea in, in the slightest, to be honest with you, other than the fact that Olvia has white hair, Robin has black hair, Dragon has black hair, so Olvia plus Dragon could give Nico Robin black hair. That's pretty much the only thing that supports that theory, in my opinion. Aside from Robin being quote unquote the light of the revolution. Another idea though that I do kind of like is that Goldie Roger may be Nico Robin's father. And here for me, everything would kind of line up. You have Robin who has black hair, Nico Olvia has white hair, so in this sense, just like Dragon, Roger works. We also know that Roger cares about the Poneglyphs and has an unfulfilled desire to basically share the history with the world, which could have been why he was never really fit, like uh, with Olvia and Nico Robin. Obviously, he was doing that on his own, being the Pirate King and shit. Uh, and then, of course, Olvia, after Roger left, might have wanted to help him in his journey in some way. Even going so far as to abandon her daughter, who she clearly loved a lot, in order to do that. And we could also speculate that Olvia may have met Roger in the past as well, because Roger was going around collecting all the Poneglyphs. Ohara specifically contained the Poneglyph, and so it seems likely Roger would have found the Poneglyph in Ohara, would have visited Ohara, and then had an opportunity to meet Olvia. And so let's assume that's true. If it's true that Goldie Roger is in fact Nico Robin's father, then that would suggest that Roger hooked up with uh, Ace's mother, uh, Portgas de Rouge, as well as Nico Olvia. And this kind of supports my mini theory, which I want to talk about, but really isn't deserving of a video by itself because it's kind of a stretch because you have to assume that this is true in the first place, that maybe Roger was going around hooking up with other Ds to produce maybe the, the D that would bring about the great change to the world as sort of like like the person that Roger was looking for. Basically, uh, Ace is the only person that we know for sure that is full blood D, quote unquote, because uh, his mother was a D and Roger was a D. It's also pretty likely that there will be D scattered across many of the nations that are protecting the Poneglyphs, including Ohara, which would include Nico Olvia potentially. And so that could make Olvia a D as well, which we, basically Roger wasn't like hooking up with these people because he may, he may not have actually been in love with them, but perhaps was trying to create the future in a sense. Um, and so, you know, is Nico Robin a D or not? Does she know it? Nico Robin holds a lot of her secrets close to her chest, so she may in fact be a D. She may in fact know that she's a D and just chooses not to mention it because as law states, the D is supposed to be a secret initial. For those who remember that it's supposed to be a secret. Anyway, let's move on from Robin. I do think that there's a lot of potential that her backstory as well, or her origins, will be further explained in the future of the story at some point in time. Now I want to talk about Nami. And so Nami, just like many of the previous examples, we know her backstory, but we don't know exactly what her origins are, who her parents are, and how exactly she came to be rescued by Bellamere. By the way, I call her Bellamere despite the fact that her name is Belmere, because Belmere doesn't sound right to me, Bellamere sounds more right. Regardless, um, really all we know is that, that in, when uh, Nami was a baby, the country that she lived in was kind of destroyed and Bellamere saved her. And so why exactly was the country getting destroyed? All these things are like really, really interesting. And I don't believe that there is one guess out there that's just like amazing, that's really worthy of talking about, but for sure Nami's backstory could be explained further. And the last two Straw Hats we're left with are Chopper and Usopp. And I think that, uh, first of all, starting with Chopper, it's incredibly unlikely that he will fit this trend if it is in fact a trend for the future of One Piece because uh, Chopper was not a human, um, and he ate a devil fruit, and it seems as though we've seen everything involved with Chopper's backstory already. Like, there's no there's no missing gaps here between what we know and what we don't know. But it's possible Oda could be really creative and add elements, layers onto this in some way through perhaps expounding on the story of Dr. Hugh Luke or something like that. 
And then as far as Usopp is concerned, um, we actually know Usopp's origins and backstory for the most part. There's really not much left that we could possibly learn. Usopp's father, Yasop, is a member of the Shanks Pirates, and of course, I imagine that we are going to get more of that story whenever we meet Shanks, and Usopp does in fact meet his father, Yasop, but I don't think that there's going to be any crazy reveals thrown in there as well. But anyway guys, this is just an incredibly interesting trend that I see forming, a pattern that is sort of... Uh, yeah, unraveling right before our eyes and could very well help us understand um, how the future story may progress in various ways. I just think it's really interesting. But anyway guys, let me know what you think. Let me know if you agree with uh, the general idea or maybe even some of the specific ideas I threw out here as well. Uh, or if you disagree with them, just share your thoughts, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content, and as always guys, have a wonderful day.